In this presentation, we will take a look at Form W-3 and Form W-2. Here's a copy of a Form W-2 from the IRS website, which you can find at irs.gov. This is just a demonstration form. And of course, the W-2 is a form that most of us are most familiar with, a form that we see, a form that we get as employees at the end of the year, a form that tells us how much we've earned, and the withholdings we have so that we can then use it in order to fill out our responsibility, our individual form 1040 at the end of the year. If we go through this from an employer standpoint, it's important to note what the form W-2 is saying to us and what they're doing on their side. One, it is of course reporting to us our wages and what was withheld from us and therefore a form that can be used to fill out our tax return. That's one major purpose of the form. It's also a form that they're going to be sending not only to us, but to the IRS. And that's important to note as well, because the IRS is really not dependent on us to report our information in this case for the W-2. They already have it. They have a copy of the W-2, which is given to them by the employer. It's required to be given to them by the employer. So whenever you get a W-2 and a 1099 for that, uh, for the same, uh, which is similar, you got to note that this is not only telling us what we've earned, it's also telling us, hey, this information is reported in this format to the IRS. If you report something differently, even if you believe it be correct as different, you're going to have an issue with it because the IRS is really just matching what you report to what we report here. So that's the first thing to, to note with the W-2 that we want to make sure that we have a good understanding of. If we go through the components of the W-2, we of course have the employer identification number, the EIN number, needs to be recorded every time we have some type of uh, payroll information for the IRS. We got the employer's name, address, we've got the control number, then we have the employee's first uh, name and initial, last name, and the employee's address. Then we go through the points where we will spend most of our time looking at the actual reporting of the numbers, we're most familiar probably with the first box, which is wages, tips, and compensation. Note that this uh, box, however, is not the best representation of total wages because it will be reduced by things such as a 401k plan and possibly a cafeteria plan. So when we look at the total wages, when we try to say how much do we earn throughout the year, most of us will go here and look at box one, but it's not the best representation because it's probably lower than what our total earnings are because they've been reduced for the calculation of taxes by things that are not included in gross income for tax calculations. So we'll look a little bit more at that when we put the numbers here in. Box two, of course, is the federal income tax withheld. We have withheld taxes. It's been withheld from us, meaning we've made payments throughout the year for the employee. Now, we didn't actually write the check, but the employer was responsible for taking the money out of our uh, wages and paying for us. Then we have the social security wages, and this could differ than from line one, and it could differ based on hitting a cap for social security, and it could be, differ based on something like a cafeteria plan. Then we've got the social security tax withheld, and then we have the Medicare wages. So the Medicare wages uh, could differ from lines one and three, based on one, if there's kind of a cafeteria plan, and two, there's no cap. So this one, line five, is probably the closest to our actual wages of the three wage categories. So if we're gonna look at the W-2 and try to figure out what we actually got paid, what we're actually earning, line five might be the best or closest to. It still might be low by, say, the cafeteria plan, if there is one. And then we have the Medicare tax, and then we have the Social Security tips. Well, we're not going to get into too much as allocating tips. Well, we won't be dealing with tips here. <laughs> a verification code, dependent care benefits, uh, non-qualified plans, and then the uh, the whether or not we have a retirement plan here. So line 13 is whether we have a retirement plan. Uh, box 12, we're going to go over some of the things that could be exempt typically are kind of things that could be in box 12, including things like a, a retirement plan that would be coming out of box one and a reason that box one would differ than say box five. And we could have a cafeteria plan that uh, would be reducing pretty much all three of these items if it was qualified to do so that we would indicate down here that would be an informational 
uh, format or informational purposes down here. Then we've got the employer state ID number, which we're not going to spend time with here because it will differ from state to state. But then we have the state wages, state income tax, whatever the state law is, and uh, it could mirror the format that the Fed has, or it may be typically a, a little bit more simplified than the Fed. Uh, so it could probably be similar or possibly more simpli simplified to, uh, sometimes, <laughs> but it, it changes from state to state. And then local wages and local taxes. Note the W3, in essence, has the same stuff here. So we've got lines 135, 246, wages, Social Security, wages, Medicare, and then federal income tax, FIT, Social Security tax, and Medicare tax. And that's because the W3 will just be summing up all the W2s. So if you think of all of our employees like as one big like conglomerate thing of, a, of an employee, then they then the w3 would basically be reporting all of their stuff all of their wages uh, in one group so it's going to sum up in other words the w2s so that's mainly what we want to get on the w3 i'm just going to uh, leave the w3 at that we'll do a little bit of a calculation for this now uh, if we had the earnings records for in this case four employees here anthony cindy jill and judy then uh, we're going to take this data and create the w2s from it so this earnings record will have one for Andy. We got the total earnings. We've got the uh, OASDI earnings, uh, which in this case are going to be the same except for uh, Judy, which differs because Judy reached the cap and the cafeteria plan is not, there's no cafeteria plan reducing these. So they're the same for our other employees. Then we've got uh, the FUTA wages, which isn't going to be on FUTA, is not on the W-2 because it's an employer uh, tax. SUTA as well, FUTA and SUTA. And then we got the OASDI, we got the actual amounts that were taken out of each employee's uh, checks. And then we've got the HI Medicare taken out of the each employee's checks and FIT, the amount taken out of each employee's checks. Uh, insurance, which is not a cafeteria plan, not qualified to reduce uh, the net income taken out and then union dues and the 401k which will be uh, reducing federal income tax and then the net pay so these are our totals we're going to then go through each of the w-2s pretty quickly so here's just a copy of the w-2 that's kind of like a simulation form and we would take that information and fill out box one wages and compensation which would differ in this case from uh, box three is different from box three in this case from the retirement plan that was here. So the difference between the 20,812.50 and the 1976.85 can be seen in 12A indicated by a code which should be the retirement plan. And it's also indicated here that we have a retirement plan. Now, if there was a, a qualified cafeteria plan, it could be down here with a DD, which would, which would be just an informational uh, piece as well but ours isn't a cafeteria plan but just to note that uh, and then we so we've got the social security and then we've got the medicare wages these two are the same because this employee hasn't hit the cap and therefore these two will be the same note that this number is probably closest to the actual earnings of this employee then the federal income tax is based on on these wages the social security is based on these wages Note the FIT can't be derived directly from these wages because uh, it, it depends on the amount of exemptions and uh, all that, which we'll be calculating on the Form 1040. This one, however, should be a flat tax. So we can actually see that the 20,812.5 20, times 0 0.062 is this 1,290. And we can see that this 20,000 for Medicare times 0 0.0145 should be the 103.78. So these two we can actually recalculate, this one we cannot. And so that's gonna be the first employee, second employee, similar. We've got the wages in box one, differing from box three for social security and Medicare because box one is being reduced by the 401k plan, which we can see in box 12A. Then social security and Medicare will be the same because this employee did not reach the cap. FIT, federal income tax, being calculated based on box one, but we can't see a direct link because of the complexity in the FIT, federal income tax. Social Security, 6.2%, Medicare, 6.2% of box three and box five, respectively. 
Same thing for our third employee, box one differing from box three due to the retirement plan in box 12 and it being this box three same as box five because this employee didn't match the cap. Same calculations box two, four, and six. Then our last employee is a bit different. This is our high earner here. This is uh, Judy Jones. Uh, she has wages in box one differing from box three. Social security wages differing than total compensation. One because uh, box one has the 8750 for the amount that was in the retirement plan, but also because she hit the cap, which is at 128400 so if we start to see higher wage individuals, this one's just gonna stop at whatever the cap is. In this case, it's 128,400. So notice of these three numbers, they're all differing. The Medicare is probably the closest to what the actual earnings are because the Medicare does not have a cap and is not being reduced by something like the um, 401k or retirement plan. Then if we were to add all those up, then this would be box one wages if we were to add up all four boxes for our four employees, this would be box three wages, social security wages for four employees, Medicare wages for four employees, federal income tax for four employees, which cannot directly be tied to this number because it's too complicated. Social security, however, and Medicare can be calculated on a, a total basis as well, meaning the 194,606 times 0.062 gives us the 126557 and if we were to take the 241206 times 0 0.0145 we get the 3497 uh, there so these two we can calculate because they're nice flat taxes <laughs> accounting i don't know anyone in accounting